I end up doing these at night all the time when I could be doing them during the day and get all the nice sunlight, but it's just how it's been working out lately. This is going to be a tag video. I'm doing it a week in the past um, because I want to have something uh, up on, on next Tuesday, so I'm going to do it and bank it. It's been around for a while, the chest tag, which was created by, let me get to the notes here that I'm going to crib off somebody else's. I just watched Reading Ideas do this. I just watched his video and um, gave me some good ideas um, of what I wanted to say, so I figured I'd do it before I forget. Anyway, this tag, the chess tag, was created by Aaron Read a Book. And I'm going to go through the prompts. Number one, <clears throat> first prompt, and this is why I didn't do it before, because I couldn't think of one for this, and then for some reason it just came to me. It's so obvious. Anyway, prompt number one, Pawn, a book about a lowly character that rises through the ranks. Well, that's pretty much any Dickens novel, I could say, and I really like Dickens, so I'm going to go with... Uh, um, Peer Up Pip from uh, Great Expectations. I think that's my favorite overall Dickens novel. I might even use that in another tag once. Um, yeah. He rises through the ranks. Of course, Oliver Twist does the same thing, too. Um, you know, but... Pretty obvious answer, but it's what I'm going with. Then the, the next piece we go to Rook, a book that features a castle, a tower, or a chariot. I believe first thing that came to mind was the same one that I believe uh, Steve Donahue did, which was the Gorman Gast books, the first two Gorm, books of the Gorman Gast trilogy by Mervyn Peake, which are excellent, fantastic, brilliant extremely well-written, evocative, beautiful fantasy novels. Titus Grown is the first one, then Gormangast is the second. The castle is Gormangast, this giant castle full of these uh, uh, eccentric characters that have been living in it for decades and decades uh, when, the, when the small child Titus Grown is born. Uh, the first birth in the castle for a long time. Those are fantastic. I also thought of, you see, my mind is like very, I'm very literal. Everything I think of on these things almost has the, the name of the piece in the title, and I can't get off it. The other one, because the other one I thought of was Shirley Jackson's book, We've Always Lived in the Castle, which is not a castle. It's a, uh, it's a house where these two women live who are related to each other, who are pariahs in the town uh, because there used to be more people living in that house and we find out all about that. It's a very chilling novel. It's an excellent novel. Um, but I guess my, my actual peak is Gormenghast, Titus Gorman and Gormenghast. Then, uh oh, this one I didn't think about very much, Night. A book about an animal or animals, bonus points if it's a horse. Yikes. I don't even know how many animal books I've read. This is one that, that um, Reading Ideas had a, a brilliant take on. I'm not going to be able to match the cleverness of his take. Um, Steve Donahue said Black Beauty, which I could steal because I remember having those books read to me in, I don't know, I think third or fourth grade or something. We had a teacher who read those to us and they were really uh, gripping kids' books, the whole series of Black Beauty books. I don't remember them that well, though. <clears throat> I'm vamping here. I, I've read Call of the Wild. I like that, I guess. It's got a dog in it. Okay, let me get back to the... Oh, I can't find the rest of the prompts. There's not that many. Oh, my God. Yikes. Why can I not find the prompts? Okay, 
a bishop. The next one is a bishop. A book that features religious characters or members of a church. Bonus points for a bishop. I'll go with, I had some contenders here. I really like, um, I was going to say Frenchman's Creek, but that's not the name of it. What's the book by Daphne du Maurier? Um, uh, about the smugglers. You know the book I mean. It'll come to me. Um, which has some either religious characters or, or maybe uh, posing as religious characters in it. Uh, it's embarrassing. I can't think of the name of that book. Or you could say uh, Three Musketeers, which I've referenced a lot this month because of Cardinal Richelieu. Nice, uh, good villain. One of the best villains in adventure fiction. But I'm going to say Three Stigmata of... Oh, no, I'm not going to say Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge because that's not the book I'm thinking of. The Transmigration of Timothy Archer by Philip K. Dick. One of his last books, maybe his last novel. His last novel... Not his last one published, because I think there were some manuscripts, there were actually quite a few manuscripts that were published after his death. It might have been the last novel he wrote before he died, or, or the penultimate one. It's a mainstream novel, mostly. Uh, at the time, his publisher didn't care. They published it as a, uh, as a regular category science fiction novel. Um, it's about a, I think he's a bishop, is he an Episcopalian bishop or something like that, named, named Timothy Archer, modeled on a, a real-life figure whose name I can't remember now. Timothy Archer. Man, these are just, I'm just getting worse and worse at these. Timothy Archer. It's a, it's a very well-written novel. It, it really presages what Dick would have done if he hadn't have died so early at age 54 or whatever it was, what he would have gone into, um, uh, other kinds of... Oh, okay, yeah. The novel draws on autobiographical details of Dick's friendship with the controversial Episcopalian Bishop James Pike. Uh, and it continues Dick's investigation into the religious and philosophical themes of Vallis. There is um, some... Um, sort of metaphysical things that happen at the end. It's it's a very good novel. Uh, I haven't read it since it came out, though. Okay, did I miss the Queen? Oh, no, the Queen is next. All right. So, the Queen. Now, this again, this is me being very literal-minded here. We're talking about chess, and we're talking about the Queen. First thing I think of, and I can't get it out of my head, is The Queen's Gambit, which is an excellent novel by Walter Tevis. Speaking of non-science fiction novels by uh, writers known for science fiction, Walter Tevis wrote The Man Who Fell to Earth. He wrote Mockingbird. Those are his main two science fiction novels. And he wrote uh, The Queen's Gambit. And he wrote The Hustler, the, the, the pool... Um, the pool player book. So amazing. I mean, and he wrote a couple other books too, but just an amazing variety of books. How can you write a masterpiece like The Hustler and a science fiction masterpiece that understands science fiction like The Man Who Fell to Earth? I don't get it. He was a very, uh, uh, very brilliant writer. He had a drinking problems, so he didn't write very much. And he died fairly young after he retired, and I think he died around 70 or something, just as he had started writing again. Color of Money, that's a sequel to uh, The Hustler, not as good, but definitely better than the Scorsese movie and a completely different plot. It just used the title. Okay, so that's, and then another one, and here again, Queen again, Queen Lucia, I, I thought of too. Uh, the Map of Lucia books by E.F. Benson, uh, which are comic novels about uh, a couple of uh, ladies who, who um, uh, have time on their hands and don't have jobs and get into all kind of political shenanigans and rivalries and stuff and in their town of uh, Tilling, fictional town of Tilling. 
Uh, they're very fun to read if you like comic novels, if you like P.G. Woodhouse. And, um, and um, Jerome K. Jerome, that kind of thing. They're really fun to read. And I, I do like... Lucia, what's her name? Her actual name is Lucas, Mrs. Lucas. Lucia is her, her Italian nickname, Lucas, and I definitely see her as the heroine and Miss Mapp as the villain of those books. They're really fun. I think I've read them twice. I really like that kind of stuff. Okay. Hopefully, I'll have some better videos that will go up before this one. Because this is terrible. I'm not going to redo it, though. Okay, King. Almost at the end here. The King, a book about a monarch or ruler. I'll go with T.H. White's The Once and Future King. Which is uh, about King Arthur. Arthur. Great books, uh, along with um, Gormenghast, I think the best f fantasy ever written. I'm not that much of a Lord of the Rings fan or any of that stuff, but uh, T.H. White is something I've been thinking about. So I think somebody just talked about him on some other channel recently. Most people had on my mind. It's something I need to read again. So I'll go with that, <clears throat> as opposed to, I don't know, King Cole, The Shadow Kingdom. That's a, a really good story. That was the first... The Shadow Kingdom was the first Robert Howard story that I read that really stuck with me. So one of the first ones I read, I had a book of King Cole stories that I think I read before Conan, but after the comic books. En passant, tag some people. Uh, I'm not going to do that because this isn't going to go up for a week. This is doing this on the 23rd. It's not going to go up till the 30th just so I have a tag to do every week. Um... And I think a lot of people have already done it. And, and before this goes up, probably most other people have done it. But I want to thank uh, Aaron Reed's book for creating this tag. It's a, it's a good one because it actually gets you to talk about specific books. And um, also, I enjoyed uh, Reading Ideas' uh, version of it, which got me, uh, directly prompted me, I mean, he didn't uh, prompt me, but directly, directly inspired me to to do the tag and that's it for now see you again